Okay, guys. Wow. The universe is really, um, it's just really making us work for this uh, live today with Sandra at Lanshin. And I'm bummed because we did a whole uh, introduction, but thankfully we hadn't started, hadn't started the tutorial. So if you're just joining now, you're going to get the whole tutorial. And hopefully we are not going to freeze. So, uh, <laughs> please bear with me. We're going to go through this again. And waiting for Sandra to join. So just to recap, we were telling people how gua sha, which stems from Chinese medicine, is all about um, is all about uh, returning to. I'm going to turn off commenting, guys, so we can see the whole screen. Except now, how do I see when Sandra wants to join? <laughs> Let's see. So we're talking about how gua sha, as a part of Chinese medicine, is all about internal beauty and cultivating a healthy. Um, lymphatic system, um, taking care of your internal organs, all these are really important things to think about. We think beauty is something in a bottle or some kind of treatment that we need to get from, um, from some outside source and something that, okay, and something that she has, uh, something that you need to spend a lot of money on. Sorry guys, I'm doing, trying to do 30 things at once because I'm really nervous because this thing isn't working and it feels so important that I want to share it with you. But we're struggling so hard. So thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for your patience. I'm going to take a deep okay. breath. <gasps> yes, okay. let's take a deep breath because you know what I think is happening and I don't know, it's just a hunch. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think that there's a lot of energy on this call and sometimes when there's a lot of energy, it sort of crashes our system. So um, no worries. There's just a lot of energy and that's just how it goes. So let's just, um, we will hopefully intend to manifest that we'll be able to communicate through the whole call. I have a, feel, a good feeling about this one. All right, so what we were saying was that beauty has become something that we have, uh, we think we need to outsource these days. Oh, I need to book this expensive spa treatment or I'm not gonna be beautiful until I buy that cream or have this procedure. And, and Sandra and I were agreeing that this is a very sad moment for beauty um, because really it is something that you should be able to cultivate internally and radiate from within. And it is actually our birthright to be radiant and healthy and beautiful. And yes. gua sha, coming from a tradition of Chinese medicine, really embodies that um, idea of taking it into your own hands, taking your beauty and your health into your own hands and not having to rely on somebody else to do it. And I have to say, since starting gua sha, I have to do so so much less like other things to my face, like oh, facials amazing. and things like that, because now my skin is, and, and the circulation is working for me you know yes. and so i'm wearing like a little bit of lip tint now and some concealer here where i went a little too hard on the facial copying which will be our next session <laughs> i'm experimenting that is the that's the tricky thing about cups they're tricky but, they, but it feels so good i know i know no totally I, we should go we should cover that that's the next there's another section okay yeah. but this is my skin no makeup and this oh, is I, I look this so is, glowing that's, that's how I think when I look at you. You were oh, the first thanks. representation of, of, of a really radiant glowing skin that I remember seeing. And I thought, okay, I, whatever this lady's doing, I want to get on her program. And so. what I do and what, it's so basic. It's like anyone can do it. it. It's not like some crazy $500 cream. You know what I mean? It's so basic. I know. It's just and, so and accessible. Ancient. Yes. I, totally. I love that. And so maybe speak to a little bit about the history of it, and then we can get into a, a, sure. a tutorial. Well, facial gua sha comes from um, body, this practice of body gua sha, which is a really important practice and technique inside of Chinese medicine. So I call it the cousin to cupping, which you've started to play with a bit. And um, they're like cousins. They're just different means to the same end of helping to improve circulation, helping to release the tension in our muscles and in our fascia or our tissue. Um, and, you know, it helps to improve circulation on like multiple dimensions. So 
the dimension of your blood circulation, of your lymphatic circulation, of your energy, which we forget to talk about um, circulation because that's real. And that's what Chinese medicine is based on. So it really just helps to um, unblock any of the blockages because, you know, we have little knots and things in our, in our face, just like we do in our neck and our shoulder. And we need to break those down. And as we get older, we get more of them or they get like more um, stubborn and, and, and stuck, you know? And so we break those down and we open up the circulation and all the pathways to what your life force, right? So this is about becoming more alive, you know, alive in every crevice and part of you. I love that. I love that. And so I love the concept of life force, chi, and the mm -hmm. idea that you can have it flowing everywhere, including your face. And I think this is so important in today's day and age. It's the antidote to what most people are doing, which no judgment, I've done Botox in the past, but that's actually freezing your face and stopping the flow of energy. Am I wrong? You know, it's hard to say. I, I think conceptually it would make sense to think about it that way. I think um, energetically, I feel like, for me, even if it's just energetically, I felt a, a, a block. Ah, uh, okay. But see, because I've never had it, so I can't speak from, you know, living with it, but that makes sense. Because it is, um, what, you're, what Botox does is it, um, it, it says, um, it turns off the function of your muscles. So anytime you turn off function, you are turning off a natural working, um, working thing that has life force to it. So it's kind of like, you know, you're interfering uh, I, with the life force. If yeah. You're blocking it. And yeah. I would notice that because I would do it for my jaw for TMJ. I would notice that I would just compensate with other muscles. So oh, even that's if I, interesting. yeah, so it's like, I realized like there's got to be another solution. Like I was very grateful to it because for many years I was in pain and my masseter was like really just like big and hurting. So it helped me, but I, I, I understood in the back of my head, like I have to find something else and I have to get to the root cause. You know, this is really a, a band aid for me. Same. Oh yeah. God, this is, we're going to. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. This. We're back. Same with, all, same with all the wrinkling, like in, around here. Like I realized, like I don't want to stop the movement. I want energy to be flowing mm -hmm. so that I have the option of being in relaxation or having full expression. So I just love the what you offered in terms of life force and chi in your face and opening up channel so that life that energy and chi can flow and you can radiate yeah. with expression and life as opposed to just the other option that society has gives us has given us and all i'm saying is that it's good to have options you know it's good yes and that's what it's all about it's good to have options and um you know picking up the hydration and the circ and by circulating your skin you also improve the hydration just that makes your skin look so much better you know, I, so, I, I agree. So should we get into it? Let's get it? into it. Yeah. Well, maybe while you're doing it, well, we'll, we'll copy you with our, with our tools and maybe you can sprinkle in some facts about the history and stuff. But I think people sure. are probably by this time itching to see it done. Do you have, the, so you're using another I one have, of our tools. I have all of them. So just tell me oh, which one I need. I'm using this one today. Okay. Oh, and the, and the spoon I'm going to have to run and go get. If we get to the spoon. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, so here we but go. So, okay, so to start with gua sha for everyone, you always start with a clean face. And then we, when we moisturize to prep. So do you have any spray with you? Hydrating I do. Mist? Okay. I have all the tools. I got my spray and I've got my oil. Perfect. So um, when we start, as you know, we generously apply our hydrating mist to neck and face. So gua sha is not, for me anyway, gua sha, facial gua sha is about the neck just as much as it is about the face. Because so much of what happens in our face is um, influenced by our neck. And like, think about all the tension that we all have in our neck. I have to say that one of the things I've enjoyed about starting this practice is getting to the bottom of where my problems are and discovering that actually all my jaw tension was coming from my neck. You and got I it. used to cheat and not do the neck, but now the <laughs> neck is now the neck is foundational. 
Exactly. You totally get it. Especially if there's puffiness in the face, you got to drain, you got to open the neck, you got to open that gateway, right? Mm -hmm. So now you see how, I don't know if you can see, you can see that my face is damp now. See yeah. how that starts to enliven the skin? Yep, I need some more. I need and then as damp as you. <laughs> get wet, girl. <laughs> and then, um, okay, so we're going to press and massage that in a bit, Ooh. right? Treat it like a cream. Just because it's water doesn't mean you don't work it in like a cream. This is another thing that has been revolutionary for me. Revolutionary. Me. Oh, my yeah. God. It's, like, game-changing. Your face needs a drink of water just like you do, especially in the morning. Yeah. I love getting my hot water and lemon and then giving my face its, it's, uh, <laughs> exactly. its drink of water. Exactly. And then now it's ready for oil. So with facial gloss it's nice to use oil instead of a cream though if you can't use oil or you don't like oil you can use a cream it's just not as the slip isn't as nice you know but it's doable so now that your skin's nice and damp i just pump um about four drops or one pump for my face and then um i add on a bit for my neck so yeah you have a really good technique there of prepping it in your palms. I've seen all your videos, Sandra. I'm, I'm a big <laughs> fan. And I've sent them to people. Such a good people, student. People have responded like, I never knew you were supposed to do that with the, with the water spray. Or I never knew that I was applying sunscreen wrong. <laughs> oh, is, I know. It's, if you just change the way you apply your products, they go so much further. Mm -hmm. So now, um, now we're prepped. So I always start with less oil. And if you need more, you can always add more later. And then we're going to do our neck as well. I did my neck, but I, I always like to be stingy with my neck, and I've got to just get out of that mentality. My neck deserves as much love as my face. I'm oh, definitely. Say that, say it's, that affirmation to myself right now. It's like a partner with your face. I mean, they're like yes. neighbors, and like every and it, does, it supports your face. It does so much work for us, and it gets so little attention and not enough acknowledgement. We should, everybody, if it, you're doing this with us at home, acknowledge your neck and thank it right now. Yeah. And think of how hard it works for you, keeping your head down on your phone all day, you know, on your computer. We've, it does so much work for you. We've been really abusing our necks in today's day and age with all this. Yeah. 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 Our necks are superheroes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. So now that you are prepped, um, okay, so this is, um, the, we're going to use this tool this is the Lanshine Pro Guasa tool, and it's the one that I designed, which is why um, why it's so nice looking <laughs> and also functional. But what we're going to do is if you at home don't have this particular tool, it doesn't mean you can't do it, um, just approximate, you know, what we're doing. So um, some of you might have, like you have the Nephrite version of this. If you're following us at home, we're going to use this tool, but you can just – Turn your tool that like this and just use, you know, this equals this, this equals this, and just try it that way, okay? So if we're being really basic with people who don't really know gua sha or feel a little bit intimidated, then um, I'm just going to keep it easy, and then you ask me questions, like, as, as they come along. So um, I like to start on my neck, and... Um, what you do is you simply take the tool. If we're, do, if we're being so basic that it's like equivalent to jade rolling, then you just take your tool, just put it somewhere on your neck, but put it down flat. See how I just like kind of slap the tool flat? Yeah. And then just anywhere it touches, just glide. So you can go down or you can go up. And you just... So what we're going to do is we're going to go in one direction at the same time. So what we what I don't love for gua sha because it's not technically gua sha is painting like a wall where you go ah. up down. So you always do all down, build a flow, okay, and then all up if you want to do up. So we're going to do both directions, but we're going to just stay on one direction at a time, and just move all all the way around your neck and include the back of your neck as well. And what is pressure like, like holding a child's hand to cross the road? Like, what would you compare it to? I like to describe the pressure as um, yummy or pleasurable. But that's different for me because I like a lot I of pain. 
<laughs> exactly. So I'm like, get in there. But then I realize it's counterintuitive. Well, so a good way to think about it is use the same sort of pressure and speed that you would on your lover. Also so your problem for me. Oh, <laughs> Hmm. Well, that's a different conversation. I'm, I'm remedial, okay? I want to get in there, get the knot, and eliminate it. And I'm so, to learn how to be a little more gentle. Yeah. So if you're that type of person, like if those of you watching are that type of person, then just do what you would normally want to do and then back up about 50%. <laughs> okay. I'm so glad I'm getting the one-on-one -on -one coaching. <laughs> but it's about, I would call it medium to light. So medium, um, we're on our neck. So the neck can take a lot more pressure than the face. But on, on the neck, if you do end up going a little bit stronger or harder than recommended, it's not going to hurt you. Yeah. The, okay. So, um, so we're doing all, so we worked all the way around the neck. So now we did all down. Now you can start doing up. That way you're creating a full cycle of up and down. Before we go up, can I just share with people something that I've learned from one of your videos that I've been loving for those who want sure. to get more advanced? Um, is it, well, maybe it's when you go up or down, but just getting below this clavicle here. Yeah. That I've noticed that a lot of my tension is actually coming from just below the neck. So can yes. you speak to like, if you want to go down there and incorporate Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. When, you know, in my videos, we talk about starting below, like you said, below the collarbone and rolling over it like this. Oh, collarbone. What's the clavicle that? Same thing. That's oh, a okay. more common term. You're much more medical clavicle. Oh. Um, so for those of you that don't know what a clavicle is, it's, it's the collarbone, but it's the same thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you can, you can roll over it and it's, Intuitively, you got it because there's this muscle, it's called the platysma, and it actually, it's like the turtleneck muscle. It starts below the collarbone. It's this whole piece that comes all the way up and attaches to your jawline here. So that's what gets all like tight and like ropey when, when people get older. So you can work all the way, you can even work down to your boobs. You can get into that like, I trust me, you I know? do. In, in my sessions, I like to just fall, just go where the gua sha takes me. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't have said it any better. It's, I get really is. intuitive with my gua sha techniques because what I love to do is follow the thread of tension in my body because I'm stopping to think of, I'm stopping the, the thought of this like compartmentalizing my body, like TMJ, yeah. I've got to do everything right on my jaw. Well, like you said, well, that tension that it generally stems from somewhere else and yes. so following the thread of the tension and realizing hang on this is sore but this is also really tight too and so is here and then I realized it's all connected and we can't just all treat connected. one separately that's right you totally got it <laughs> couldn't have said it better myself uh, okay cool. um Okay, so, so yeah, down, that's yeah. a really good tip. So up and down. So um, so you can know, up and down, and when you finish with your neck, you can give it a little roll and just check it out. I think that's nice for people to really feel what's changed. And a lot of people will start to feel like their headache or their sinus congestion start to clear yeah. as you're working your neck. Um, yeah. So now when we move on to the face, I just think it's fun to choose one side and then see how it changes compared to the other side. So um, so when on this tool and then on those, if you have one that's similar at home that has kind of like this notched edge, you can use it. I call this train rides the track. So your jawline's the track. This is the train. This is the train. And you just put either point on either side of your jawline and you just ride the track. You keep it flat. Is Keeping it flat gives you just a better result. Okay. It's not flat. like it's it's not like it's awful or like terribly wrong or harm. It's not harmful to be caught doing it like this. Do you see the difference when I do it? Yeah, that's it's not awful. That used but to be me. <laughs> this is just better technique for Basha. And what you do is let me switch this. You um. You ride the tr so the track turns up 
Yeah. At the back of your jaw. So you want to make sure that you catch that. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so nice. A little up. Okay. Well, yeah, my, come I've all got the way a serious up. track. It's it's never ending. You got a beautiful track. Look at that. It's a it's a so blessing because <laughs> <laughs> Beauty is always a blessing and a curse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you get up here, one thing that's really nice is you can run, run circles in front of your ear and that helps release mm -hmm. your jaw. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So okay. next week we're going to do facial acupuncture points in the face because you work <laughs> with that, right? As well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so isn't it interesting that like this technique feels so good and like so many beauty techniques are like all about pain They create this, pain. I know this like that point that you just I've just discovered now with you <laughs> Because I hadn't found it before right here where the track ends and they get to my ear Yeah, just that little massage like opened up. You feel my, a difference. Yeah, I feel a difference in my face Oof. Totally wait till we get up to the temple <laughs> Okay so, okay, so that's train rides the track. So we're starting to sculpt the jaw and actually to break down the little knots that are all along our jaw because our muscles attach here, right? So this is a point that a lot of tension will grow from. So now after you, you, after you ride the train, mm -hmm. now we can move. I like to move to the jowl. Now on this particular tool, now not everyone has this, but on this particular tool, we have this lip. The so lip is revolutionary. I love, I love using the lip. lip. If you don't yeah. have a lip, just use any surface that can fit here. So we're gonna do the jowl, right? So we just put the lip down and then just stroke it back to the ear. Is there, could you do this too much? Because I could do this all day. Like how many times is too I, many times? I think you'll get bored before you do it too much. <laughs> okay. And I think that because you're so intuitive and really not everybody is intuitive. We, you know your body better than I do. Those of you watching know your body better than I do. You know when it's enough. You gotta start to trust your inner voice and your inner knowing. Um, I think that that's something we tend to give that away. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Like we tend to like make it about somebody else that knows more than I do. And, and, and then everything they say is right. But really you've got to listen to your own. You have an inner doctor, you have an inner knowing, you have an inner, inner voice that you need to listen to. So I love that. And I love the intimacy that this helps you create with yourself. You know, I've noticed like, and so if you're doing this at home, you might hear and feel the little bumps you know yeah is that compacted fascia is that what that is it's like the it, we or you could call it an adhesion like oh. where tissues like adhese they glue together instead oh, yeah. of tissue should have like just like in a pastry like different layers uh-huh but when you overuse your muscles over time they like glue together and they become little knot knots and bumps they're like little speed bumps I have, right. I have, I have, I found a lot in interesting places in my face. And what I love is in the like 12 months now that I've been doing gua sha consistently, I've noticed them go away. In yeah, some yes. Places. You can, totally. and you can see the difference. You can see it. You can feel it. It's, you don't have as many like bump, 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 bumps, right? When you go over it. And, and what's nice about working with this area is, um, is, you know, we start to get a little jowly as we get older, which is perfectly not a problem. It's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, what that can, can reflect is hypertension in the jaw. <gasps> that's, so that's me. That's why. Okay. I'm going to get so, yeah, back working it. with the <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, just back it up a little. <laughs> I'm like, get it. And, and get a it little started. bit and a little bit like slower and longer of a stroke is nice. Um, because if you do too many fast and short strokes on your face, you might pick up, you might bring out something called sha. That's the sha of gua sha. It's those little red speckles, little that redness mm -hmm. that shows up. Um, it's not. It's okay if you get it. It's not. It's okay. Don't don't freak out. But um, it's not our goal. Okay. For the face. All right. I'll back off. Be, I'll be so, kind to my face. <laughs> be. I mean. I don't know. 
it's, I'm, it's I'm just that a little lover idea. What? Yeah, it's that lover idea, but I don't know what happens in your sheets. But like, <laughs> yeah, um, very um, militant and bossy, I've been told. <laughs> Um, so you can just keep working this up. So like you can come to the, the edge of your lip mm -hmm. and stroke that back and that helps to sculpt. You know, uh, this is an area we like to sculpt. That feels good. Yeah. That's, this is for the high cheekbone. Um, we're getting there. Guys. Yeah. We're definitely getting there. Well, this is the underneath part. So what exactly. I've learned about makeup is that if you want this to be chiseled, then you have to get the under the cheekbones chiseled Ooh, too. I yes, know girl. This is for the contouring. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. So wait, I'm going to let you just uh, keep demonstrating this side because um, like the newbie I am, I am scared that my battery is going to run out. So let me just sort that out while you continue with the oh, tutorial. Okay. I'll be 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So um, if you're using like a different tool, you can just do everything that we're doing with the surface that you have that's available. So like I'm using a different tool now and I can still get these areas uh, just by pressing gently and then stroking back. And notice that I'm, this is all about using the flat edge of the tool to stroke your skin and your tissues. So this is Good technique. This is, in my book, not so good technique to use the edge. It's not harmful, but we, I'm just a sucker, not a sucker, a stickler for good technique. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I like good technique. and begin to stroke all the way back. All right, so we're at the cheeks. So okay. with this tool, what's nice about this tool is it fits into the curves of your face. That's why it's designed this way. So see how you can ride the cheekbone track now with this wider angle. And it just kind of fits right in there for that contour. And here's what you're gonna love, Nat. So if when you get up here to the, to the temple, circles. Mm -hmm. So come all the way up. Yeah, circles. Oh. That is really, that's really Oof. good. This is amazing. This feels really good. We I have so much tension. Oh, so at much our, tension. At our, at our scalp, right? Yes, I think this would solve like so many people's migraine and headache problems. Oh, totally. Yeah, I mean, Yes, it, it actually does help a lot of people's. Now, some people's are too strong and they need yeah. to get like deeper work. But, um, but for a lot of people, it can be very helpful. So now on, the, on this tool, when you really want to get that contour, you can take that lip again. And okay, so see how I'm like placing it right here? Yeah, and then like you angle it in like this. Ooh. Yeah, and then you can kind of hold it and support it all the way back. You see how you really get that, like, yeah. carve? Yeah, wow. That's it's like, like really... carving your cheek. Yeah. Wow. Like, if you were a sculptor, this would be when you create your cheeks. You know what I mean? Okay, thank you for this pro tip. This is, this is a pro tip. Yeah. Um, this is what I do this in professionally 20, 25 times on this area. So... And when you get up here again, the circles are so nice on the temple. Right? Okay. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you can see, this is my saggy side that I'm working and already it's kind of like pulling tighter. <gasps> Look at the difference and, on my face. Yeah, it's like pulling tighter. And so that you can is see- That's crazy. Guys, look, this is the side that I've done. This is the side that I haven't done. Yeah, way it's more sculpted. sculpted. I'm telling you, magic. And, and you can do it yourself <laughs> at home. Yes. And imagine doing this every day. Okay, I'm excited. I know, and right now, like, you, it's not like you can go to your facialist. And, and right now, it's not like you can say, I don't have time. 
That's another thing. <laughs> we always, we, I know some, that's something, something that people say like, oh, you got to do it every day. And it just, it says so much about the society we live in. We think like beauty is like, you know, a once a month appointment with your, with your nurse or your facialist. And yeah, it's not, you, you know, if, if you, sometimes, you know, but like, but, but, you know, if you can devote 20 minutes a day doing this, imagine the benefits, you know, and that's yeah. honoring yourself every day. And do you find with your um, ritual that it's that it's meditative because it's it's also relaxing and slow and it's totally. tactile, right? Totally. It's sort of like sensual, meaning sensual, like, you know, in the body of the body. Totally. I like to like, if I don't do it in the morning as part of my morning ritual, I do it before I go to bed and like I have music and candles and it's like uh, my little treat for myself. Oh, totally. I bet also, that's gorgeous when you do that. <laughs> uh, but also, um, thank you. Uh, but uh, not that I've been watching a lot of TV, except for my own show, Baker and the Beauty, ABC 10 Oh my PM. God, congratulations. Thank Amazing. You. This Thank is so you. exciting. Yeah, I feel really honored to play the beauty, even though on the show there are three beauties. On I, I'm not the only one. But um, it's an honor to carry that title, and it's a responsibility. And that's why I wanted to do this uh, this live with you to show people how to take beauty into your own hands and stop thinking about it as something that you need to again outsource but yeah, yeah i was gonna say that gua is really good also for when you're just watching tv and you just want it right oh, do you totally. ever do that oh yeah totally <laughs> netflix and netflix gua and gua <laughs> that's the new we'll make that a hashtag guys yeah <laughs> let's start let's, let, let's make that trending except we'll, we'll do hulu and gua because that's where my show comes on and oh. uh, netflix already has their yeah, own netflix hashtag. is good they're fine netflix and chill Hulu and Gua Sha. Yeah. I'm going to tweet the, that on Monday yeah. night. <laughs> I'm going to have to get on Twitter for that. <laughs> I will. You'll also, you'll also teach me Twitter because I don't get it. Oh, um, it's a struggle for me too. <laughs> okay. So I is, um, when we get to the I, we're going to, uh -huh. we're going to be extra gentle. Okay. So, um, so if you're pulling back 50% because you like to go hard, pull back 75. Okay. So, um, so just take your fingers and this is a little bit different from my videos, by the way, cause this is a technique. So I always tell people my techniques kind of like iPhone, it's like upgrading every year. So this is just upgraded. The stuff that you see in the videos is great. It's going to get you results. This is just where I'm at now. So, um, I love that. <laughs> so fingers down at your temple. And then this pointy end is great to, to work with the eye because it kind of fits the eye area really nicely. So you start at the temple here and then you're going to go in actually, and then you're going to flick off your nose. Are you using the, the serrated side? No, um, it looks like I am, but it's ah. the, the serrated side to really use it. You have to actually be perpendicular. perpendicular. Okay. So it's not really, um, it's, I'm not really contacting that. Um, okay, maybe a little bit when I could come off my nose. Okay, good. No, but so this, you see, we get really close to the under eyelid and, um, this is just, there's actually many techniques you can use around the eye, and this is just one of them. And if I had to choose one for the under eye, I like this one. Okay. Because it kind of resets the muscle back to where it was. Because when we use our eyes all the time, you see how the muscle comes up like this? Oh. Because our eyes, our eyes, our muscles around our eyes are like circled, like mm -hmm. a sphincter. So this part of the muscle, you want to work like, like, this direction to get it to kind of reset back to where it was years ago so, so to speak okay. does that make sense i'm kind of understanding it now like just the anatomy like, of the eye yeah and so this is what i was discovering as i was working on people's faces just really watching you can see how people use their face because you can see their muscle patterns in the way that wrinkles form or tension forms. So for, for everyone, most everyone I've worked on, I like this for the under eye. Um, again, it's not the only technique for the under eye, but that can look given, at the difference in my eyes. See how it like opens up the, yes, it wow. opens up the bottom part of your eye. So now we're gonna open up the top. So you just opened it 
to the bottom. Now you're going to open it to the top. Mm -hmm. So you can, there's a couple of different ways to do this, but we can use this notched edge again, which is this edge on this tool. And what I like to do is put um, each point on either side of my brow bone. Almost like you're going to clamp your brow bone and then watch. I'm going to turn the tool like this and I'm going to go like this right here. And then I'm going to finish around. So I'm going to follow my brow bone. I'm going to ride the brow bone track. And then oh. when I get to the end, now check this out. We're going to go cat eye back up here and circle. Oh my God, that's delicious. This is a great stroke. So you have, um, so I have Asian eyes, so I have a flatter face. So for you, because you have a deeper set um, eye, yeah, you just want to, you just want to, you know, work your tool so that it covers as much of that as possible. I've been ignoring this area because I didn't know how to work with the brow bone. So there's a little like... There's so when you do this, what, what am I doing is I'm grabbing my furrow lines. I'm grabbing all that tension and smoothing it out. This, do you see what I'm doing? Yes. And wow, I have a lot of adhesions here. Everyone does. And that's what causes this droopiness over time. <gasps> Look at the adhesions. difference. Yes, yeah, so smooth. And like you've, you've drawn your face out this way now. That's it's very a, noticeable. amazing, natural sculpting. Right, just by helping to release the ten smoothing the tension. And like, and, and we don't realize, but like, you know, our eyes hold so much tension. So you know? much tension. They're, they're expressing so much more, I would say, than even our mouth. Do you know the term parasympathetic? Yes. So this stroke, by relaxing these muscles out this way, because when we're, you know, up, you know, working or stress, it does this, it goes towards the middle. So when you do this, it actually activates your parasympathetic. It's, like, <gasps> it's so the opposite it's of the, the opposite of this, of, of the this. anxious, angry, furrowed brow By, that we yeah. live in. Oh. Exactly. And for those um, listening and don't know what the parasympathetic nervous system, it's that um, it's like a switch that helps us to shut, uh, step in here, relax and like shut <laughs> step in doctor. <laughs> um, so parasympathetic, it's, they, we call it the rest and digest part of our nervous system. Um, and it's the opposite of our fight or flight nervous system, which is the sympathetic. So when you're stressed out or if you think a bear is going to kill you, your sympathetic nervous system kicks on so that you can deal and you can survive. And then equally as important is the opposite end of that, spec of that nervous system, which is parasympathetic. That helps us rest and digest because we have to do that to live too, right? I so, feel this side of my face looks and feels like a whole new person. This side of my face is still struggling, is tired, and wants to crawl back into bed. This side of my <laughs> face is ready to take on the world. <laughs> so you're like, um, a lot, some people do look like that after Guasa. They look like, like it's. One side's raised and the other side's not, and so it looks a little funny. So you have to do both sides, obviously. Um, but, okay, so that's how we work with the brow. So we've opened up the whole eye now. Mm -hmm. And to keep it super simple, um, the forehead, you can just do easy strokes from the middle to the side. And, again, work that circling at the scalp. I mean, that feels so good. And anything that has any concern about it, a drooping or sagging eye, you got to get all the way up into the scalp. Like you were saying earlier, you were making all these connections of your body um, as you do glossa, learning that it's not just about your jaw, that your jaw discomfort is also about your neck. And so our eye issues are all about this temple area too. Wow. So, so like that's a very popular surgery that people doing at the sagging eyelids. The, the, like the lifting those, which is like, look, yes. the, they, they look very good. Like, you know, if, if you get that done, but would you say that this would be a preventative for, you know? Yes. 100%, 100% yeah. working out all those little knots so that blood can flow to your skin yeah. early on. Now, even if you have 
eye issues set in already, you can still improve it yeah. um, with gua sha. So it's just, you're slow stepping towards improving it versus surgery. It's like out, you're out of surgery, it's done, right? Yeah. I mean, there's healing to do from surgery, but. So, um, so one well, more thing on the yeah. forehead. So one thing I also like to do nowadays is to go down from the scalp, like to about here. Um, why? Because this is great for smoothing out any forehead lines. Um, because when we, where do those lines come from? It's, if you watch yourself, raise your eyebrows, look at this. This is where they come from, right? So we want to just gently coax that back ah. down a bit as well. And of course, you know, you can finish on the other side of your face, but that just gives everyone a sense of what, what the heck you're talking about with this gua sha business. That's amazing. Well, I'm a living example. Here's my finished side, and this is my yet-to-be-done side. And you can just see how much more sculpted and alive this side of my face is because blood is flowing, you know. It's, uh, chi is circulating. So I want to make sure we finish on time. So um, I think we covered all the advanced tips that I want to ask you. Oh, good. Like in terms of the neck. And I, I think also there probably need to be a part two. Uh, let, Let's I, do it. So let me turn on the commenting now so we can get, um, so we can get your questions answered. So anybody i'm not going to go through them all now so if somebody could just if somebody has a burning question difference between gua sha and jade roller okay so i actually made a youtube video on this because i have a lot to say about that <laughs> so the first thing i would say is go to our lansheen lansheen.com it's l-a-n-s-h-i-n.com go to tutorials and you'll see but long story short um jade rolling it has a rolling motion, right? And it's so it's it's got like a singular type of action that it takes. That's my dog. <laughs> if you hear weird noises, it rolls over your skin. Whereas gua sha does many things. So when you do gua sha, you kind of create a little bit of a stretch. Do you see how that happens? Mm -hmm. When you roll, you don't as much. You can, but you get way more of this like this resistance and stretch, which is actually good for your skin. I know that, and your tissues. I know that people hear the word stretch and they like get nervous because they're like, I'm not going to stretch my face out. And I just really think that's an old wives tale. I, I think it maybe comes from like, obviously you're not going to like, you know, do weird, uh, stressful things to your skin. This is not stressful on your skin and your tissue loves this. This is so and it, kind it, and gentle to your skin. It, if anything, you're doing like some gentle counteraction of gravity, which is like naturally Correct. wanting to pull down. So a little bit of gentle pulling up should not be harmful at all, right? No, no. And it's such a gentle, when I say stretch, it's very slight, but it's enough to create change. I have, okay, I have a really good question here. I have several. Hey, guys, thank you so much for these questions. We can only get to a few of them. But one of them is, my mom has Bell, Bell, Bell palsy. And her mm. face is really stiff and she's in constant pain. Do you think this would help? I think that it could help, but I think that when it's that severe, um, it would be good to look into acupuncture, yeah. regular acupuncture. Yeah. And then for, for you at home or for your mom at home, this could be a technique that she does regularly for herself to supplement that initial treatment. But I think that it does require a little bit more work. Yeah, I think acupuncture would go deeper. But yes, best wishes to your mom. I've had a friend who has suffered from that as well. And yeah, it's tough. It's okay, tough. so I saw a couple more questions. Uh, our friend Irina asked, difference between fascia, um, gua sha and like a fascia blaster. Do you know the concept of the fascia blasters? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fascia blaster looks scary to me. <laughs> Wait. For the face. I haven't used it, but like. A girl, I have all the tools. This is now oh my 2017. Like, you know what? I actually have that too because I wanted to try it. <laughs> but but um, is the premise for the same face? that you're working with fascia? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we're working with fascia, just we're not blasting it. <laughs> we're. <laughs> Yeah, think about just the languaging. Do you want to blast your face like me? Or, yeah. do, you, or do you want to like gently sculpt it? Yeah, the face, for the face, less is more. And trust me on this, people 
think that like for their body, no pain, no gain. So you're going to do the same thing to your face. No, no. With the face, less is more. You're going to get much more results by and backing why is it that? up. That was another question. Like, why is gentler better on the face? You know, it's interesting. I've been thinking about that. One theory I have is that um, possibly has to do with the fact that a lot of our facial muscles attach to other muscles where, I mean, our facial muscles do attach to our bones, but they, we have a lot of like free floating facial muscles. It attaches to other muscle only. Whereas on our body, pretty much every muscle attaches to the bone. So it makes, um, uh, m like it makes the action different when you're working with the face. I think that's one theory I have. Um, but, uh, but it's a good question and I don't know, totally know why, but I know that it's true. <laughs> Well, I know from experience, just like my face did not look this sculpted when I was going at it really hard. It looked red, but like, uh, I think, yes. and I think that's also the point of going gentler is that gentler and slower allows for more intimacy and precision and feeling each individual adhe adhesion and like knowing your face. And when you're going so hard, I find that you lose that. So that, yeah, that's, that's my input. And one. have you ever used it over acne, like to help a blemish? I don't know if you get it, even get acne. Um, I get pimples for sure. I'm scared to do it over my pimples. Should I? I love uh, every one of my acne patients. I have them doing gua sha. You don't do it if the pimples open, like if it just uh -huh. opened and bled. You don't. You skip over it. But uh -huh. if you just have like, um, especially if you have a cyst, or if you have just like closed bumps you can totally guasa over it and it helps them heal faster. Okay. That's because good. Yeah. you're picking up the circulation. I get little like, um, like, yeah, just like little bumps, dermatitis or something. Like I get that. Oh, Sometimes. interesting. Well, dermatitis is a little bit different. Well, maybe it's not dermatitis, but I, I looked it up once, but just little bumps around my mouth, you know? Oh, let's talk because okay. we should figure out what that is. Yeah, I've been wanting to know. Um, okay, wait, one more question. It's going to come from me. And sorry, guys, I'm, I'm running a little <laughs> over, but I'm taking the last question because it, it, it's ending on a really funny note. Because it's your live. And it's yes. On Instagram. I heard you use the term sphincter for <laughs> the mouth and the eyes and a please explain like what like the concept because it actually is very helpful to me when i'm working in my on my mouth now i think like i'm working on the sphincter yeah. loosen up the sphincter <laughs> but um can you just explain the term and then also like a little just finish on some um just specific mouth ones because that that's, that's okay. my problem area or not really? problem that's my area of interest i am just noticing a little oh, bit of tension good correction yeah um, so a sphincter is like a, a round, um, a sphincter just denotes like a round, a round something that can open and close, right? So, you know, our most famous sphincter is in our butt. <laughs> so it's the same thing, actually. And, um, and actually, have you ever had a colonic and they tell you to relax your mouth, to relax your, have you ever? Your, that sphincter? Yeah, yeah, they always say relax before the entrance. But they, they, they told you to relax your mouth. No. To relax your, yeah. So I've had that with colonics, and it's it's because they they affect each other. So if you're <gasps> relaxed here, your sphincter can relax, and they can, you know, stick the tube up your butt. And um, so. Tadas is somebody who's also like, that too. The Tight are connected. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. All this is so sphincters profound. are connected. Oh, my God. That's the and title so of this talk. All the sphincters <laughs> are connected. This podcast is called All Sphincters Are Connected. <laughs> okay. So, so your I'm mouth muscle you. is a round muscle that uh -huh. opens and closes your mouth. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your eyes. So if you look on a, like, a muscle map, it looks round like this. Uh -huh. So when um, you work with your mouth, you just think about that. So we already worked with kind of the side area when uh -huh. we did our What about area. this? Get me a... Tell, tell me about so this area, please. I, so I, since we're using the pro, I freaking love using the comb and the lip here. So you can comb oh, out. Okay. I can so hear this, you got to be gentle. Yeah, oh. you got to be gentle. <laughs> but so you can comb out kind of to your cheek. You can also comb all the way out to the side of your face. I, I like to do that sometimes just to really integrate 
my everything together. Um, and then you can just keep working. I do this a lot in treatment. You can keep working all the way around the sphincter. Smooth out that face sphincter, that mouth <laughs> sphincter. I love it. And then you can use the lip oh, to come through. Amazing. If you don't have it, just use, just use like the surface. It's fine. The it's best. Just, okay. So, so, okay. So times are tough. If, if you can't, so your, your, your tool is available for sale. Do you ship worldwide? We do actually, we just started to this year. Okay. Um, you don't, we know we have different price points of different uh -huh. tools on our site. Cause we do, we want this to be accessible. This should be for the people. Yeah. So this is just an one option. Like you mentioned earlier, it's just yeah. about options. We have other options too. But I saw somebody say, is there something we could use in the house, like from our household? Sure. Do is you have a porcelain soup spoon? Oh, yeah. Wow. You can use a porcelain soup spoon. Okay, there you um, go. You can use anything that's smooth and kind of has a flat surface. Oh. I mean, sometimes um, if I have a breakout, I'll take my tea mug and stick it on here. Like if I have, let's say I have a breakout here, I'll just stick the tea mug here and then I'll kind of just go like this with my mug. <laughs> Oh, wow. Use your okay. team. Up. So guys, you can get creative, you know, um, and, and if you want to get the full pro tool, I highly recommend it. It's been a game changer for me. We didn't oh, even so get glad. to this baby, which is confirmation oh, that we need to do part two. Uh, part two. So thank you, Sandra, for joining me. This has been Thanks the highlight of my day. Now. This is such a, this is so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate everything that you do to help people learn more about their wellness. I think that you do a great job and you're such a good spokesperson for wellness. So thank you. Thank you. You have been a lot of my inspiration for that. So oh. I'm excited to continue this journey together. And now I need to yes, do the other same. side of my face because it's freaking me out that there are two people here. Uh, <laughs> so thank you everybody Only two. For, <laughs> thank you everybody for joining and uh we'll let Thanks you know everyone. when there's part two bye yeah bye <laughs>